Hello everyone, and this is our first week of Robots, the history of robots. Can you tell how excited I am? Welcome to I Can't Believe This Happened. We are going to start with ancient Greece, and we're going to start with the robot Talos. Now in the promo, I gave a little heads up. The first part of this, we're going to be talking about myths. And I know that's kind of weird talking about mythology in a fact-based history podcast. But I think it's important because myths and science fiction and fantasy, they're all ways that we explore what isn't and what could be. And I think it's really important to kind of take a look at what the ancients had thought about and what they had already dreamed and imagined before they actually created the first automatons and robots. And yes, they did. The ancient Greeks did. I swear we'll get to it soon. But I want to introduce you to the world's first security system robot. His name was Talos. All right, so Talos came into being, was created, not born, but made by the Greek god Hephaestus. And you have to kind of think of Hephaestus as this crazy, mad, brilliant scientist, doesn't always think how things are going to work out before he makes them go with like kind of Steve Jobs, Elon Muskish sort of thing here. Um, Really very creative, but not always thinking about how it's all going to turn out. Now, Asbestos was asked to make Talos by Zeus as a gift to the king of Crete, the king Minos. Now, this is one of three gifts. And if you're curious, and if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to take a wild guess. You're curious what the other two gifts were if a giant robot security system was only one of them. All right, sidebar, just real quick. Um, it was a golden bow and drone-like arrows that would always hit what it was looking for. And a golden hound dog um, that always catches its prey. Do you know how much I want this to be the first golden retriever? It just seemed to make sense. Now, Talos was so huge. Um, gosh, like I, I'll get to how big later. But Talos's job was to go on patrol three times a day, the entire island. So one circle around the island, three times a day. Now, I'm a tech person. Some of you who have listened know that I'm disabled. I use a wheelchair a lot of the times. And this fascinates me. If you just think for a minute, how much would have to go on for a robot to be able to patrol an island? Let's kind of think it through for just a second, because this is going to come into play later. Um, what would a robot need to be able to walk through an island? Well, a robot would need to be able to navigate uncertain surfaces, rocks, sand, water, um, changes in height and you know vegetation, things moving around. The robot would also have to make decisions based on what it is seeing. If there's a rabbit running by, would it be able to stop, step over? If its job is to search the horizon, it's going to have to make choices and be able to look at what's happening and process that information and then decide whether something is a threat or a cloud. So if you were going to program a security robot to make sure your room is always safe, what would you need your robot to be able to do? What kind of process would it need to think through? What would be some of the stumbling blocks that you would have to design for? When you have a chance, just head over to our website. It's on owlandtwine.com. Um, twine. <laughs> it's a little hard for me to say today. Um, if you head over there, just give me your answer. I'm really curious to see what you come up with and what things you would have to think through for a robot like that to exist. So one of the things Talos was not programmed to do was to be diplomatic. If Talos saw a ship that was an intruder and Talos thought, pirate, intruder, Talos was not made to do any negotiations. Talos would pick up a giant boulder and throw it at the ship. Now, if you have access and you get the okay to look this up, head over to either like YouTube or um, I don't know if it's streaming right now, but the 1963 version of Jason the Argonauts is awesome. You will see Ray Harryhausen's best with his version of the stop motion animation of Talos. And you really kind of get a feel for the size of Talos. It's really fun. It's a great movie. Um, totally not accurate to the myth. Um, let me just say that. The one thing that's accurate is the size, uh, but not accurate to the actual myth, but really fun to watch. 
If you head over to owlandtwine.com um, and click on this episode, I'm going to try to link as many YouTube videos as I can just to kind of give you a show of the different aspects of Talos. And there's also been other episodes on this by TED Talks, and I'm going to link that as well. So just if you do happen to watch this movie, just take out the grain of salt. Um, it's not it's not the um, the main person who ends up downing Talos. It's his future wife, Medea, who uses a very um, ancient form of, let's just say, cyber attack to bring Talos down and then ends up with the, the valve to save everyone. All right. So you remember how I talked about how myths and history are kind of intertwined. I'm going to have you check out Colossus of Rhodes from 280 BC. It's a giant statue. And I wanted you to go over to lontwine.com and let me know what you think. And if you see any similarities in these, this myth versus the statue that was made. So that is my wrap up on Talos, the first mythological security robot that would walk around Crete picking up trees and throwing them at ships and that is our episode for the week next week we're going to explore another myth from another part of the world there are so many of these greek robot myths that i want to do a whole bunch of them i don't want to do them all here on this podcast so if you head over to alentwine.com and you hit on our patreon page you can head over to our patreon account and you will see a whole bunch of other episodes, hopefully, if I can get to them, of some of the other myths that um, that are part of the robot myths of ancient Greece. You do not have to pay for these. I am not putting anything behind any paywall. If you are able to, if you would like to, um, I, of course, would love you to become a patron. If that is just not something you're able to do, but you really like the show and you want to help the show out, um, share the show with your community or on social media. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. And if you listened to our promo episode, you know I'm playing a game with you guys. There is always going to be one wrong fact hidden in each episode. And every week, if you just head over to the Patreon account or over to owlentwine.com, I think it's on owlentwine.com. I'm so sorry. I'm just setting this up. This is a brand new idea. But I want you to start looking up some of the things that you hear. So if you find the one wrong fact this week, go over to owlentwine.com. There's a little button you can push and you can just send me what the wrong fact is and what the correct fact is. And if you're one of the first, you know, let's say three people, I will mention your name on next week's episode. So make sure you put that down and I really look forward to your answers. I will say when I told my family about this idea, my daughter got very excited and she listened to me recording the episode and um, she decided that one of the wrong facts should be that he throws unicorn penguins, um, which I'm going to see if I can animate and draw because that's just the coolest, cutest idea ever. So if I actually end up creating this animation, you can thank my daughter. All right, everyone, have a great week. Um, I'll be back hopefully next week. Fingers crossed. Um, if you listen to the podcast, you know that I'm disabled and I do end up having to take unexpected breaks. So please be really patient with me while I, I make sure that I am able to get everything done. I love this podcast. I cannot thank you guys enough for um, pushing me on and the reviews. Thank you so much. I actually had not looked at those for a very long time. And some of you were kind enough to go over to Apple podcast and leave some reviews and Wow, that really bolstered me up and um, helped push me forward to finish this episode. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great week. I'll be back next week with another culture and a few more myths. And after that, we're going to get into the actual robots that existed in the ancient world. So excited. I cannot wait to introduce you to Da Vinci's Medieval Knight. Um, that's going to be awesome. Um, I also want to introduce you to a dove from ancient Greece that flew. We're going to have a blast. All right. I will stop. I promise. Have a great week.